Hey, what's up you guys? John from Old Reading Farm here. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, snake! Woo! <clears throat> oh, there's a snake on the ground. Oh, I'll just step over it because I'm a big strong man. <clears throat> that wasn't a snake, it was just a branch. Anyway. <laughs> ah, so brave. In today's video, we're gonna start clearing out this pasture uh, for our emus. Now, when I say start, we already had kind of started a while ago and just sort of let it sit for a while. We have a pile of brush that we were thinking was gonna be chipped, but we'll just uh, throw it in the burn pile. We just have some various uh, like scrubby brush things that have grown up since we started um, clearing this area out. There's a couple like this, this stump, I'm not sure what we're gonna do with, probably leave it. Uh, and then we have a bunch of stuff over this way. So you can see there's like dead trees on the ground and just some bigger brushy things. So we're gonna take some of that out and uh, we are going to prep for our emus to come out here because it's getting a little bit too big for our porch. And so it's, you know, getting to be time for them to come outside and since they don't ever go in a house. We figured we get the enclosure built so that they can be safe and enclosed, and then we'll build the house later. So this T-post right here represents the, uh, what is it, northwesternmost corner. So you can see there's a T-post, I think it's actually right there. That's gonna be the northeast corner. And then it's basically gonna run south that way. I think in order to see the other post, sort of right over there. But anyway, it's basically a very long rectangle. I think it's 115 feet long because we were speaking with our friend Hunter, who is an emu expert. And his whole thing was, you know, if you're gonna build an emu enclosure with a limited space, you wanna make it nice and long so that they can have plenty of space to run, you know, in a nice straight line as opposed to, you know, zigzags and L shapes. Um, the less corners, the better, because then they can just run, you know, straight for a long time. So this, this way they'll have like a hundred plus feet to run. And uh, our house for them is gonna go right on the other side over there. So it'll be nice and shaded. But anyway, you know, speaking of shade, it's really hot today, but it's nice to be out here working in the woods, um, you know, in the tree cover because it's actually not bad. It's a little bit humid, but not nearly as bad as the other day. But anyway, and you know, I'll probably take down this dead tree because that's no good. And, you know, maybe just a couple other little ones that I would just want to get out of the way in general. But originally we were going to take down like four or five of the bigger trees, but probably just not worth it at this point. It's got the cedar right here which I will probably cut and use as posts. We have some fixed knot fencing that I'll show you in a little bit, but right now I'm just gonna get right down to it and start cleaning up. You wanna come with me? All right. All right. So now I have a string line running. Everybody knows I love a good string line. So you can get a sort of better idea. And now I decided that this string line, so there's a couple trees that I think we'll just use as posts. So obviously those will be stronger than anything that I can put in the ground. And, you know, it'll save us some wear and tear on the machine. Save us some work and digging holes setting posts, etc. So before I take care of all the larger stuff, I'm just gonna go along where each fence line is gonna be and chop down some of the weeds. Now, some of you may laugh at me and some of you may think that, oh, John can't go to Harbor Freight unsupervised because John has a machete. But anyway, this is actually coming pretty handy. But also, yeah, men shouldn't be allowed to go to Harbor Freight unsupervised. Things just happen that, you know, like Kat the other day was like, is that, is that a new level you have there? And I was like, yeah, it's a six foot level. 
got it at Harbor Freight. Anyway, so stuff like this, you know, you see this, like what, what good is it? I missed. There's that Harbor Freight quality. But anyway, you know, because my weed whacker is actually at our old place. So, for the time being, I'll see what I can do with this and then come back with the chainsaw. All right, so I think we are now at an acceptable level. So we can pretty much see it's all clear down this way. Now, like I said, I think I'm gonna use definitely this tree right here to attach to. And then we have this corner right here. You know, so my corner post is right here. This tree is like four feet this way. I think I'll probably just attach to this tree and then come over to this big oak right here. Cause you know, as much as I want to have it look crazy, you know, cause as much as I want to have it look, you know, the way that I want it to look, I think at this point speed is going to be more important. So yeah, we're going to come in. So we'll hit on that tree cleaned up these cedars. I think I'll be able to use at least one of them for a post. And then I think their house is going to go right on this corner. Something like that. Maybe it'll sit back there. Who knows? But anyway, so now what I need to do, so now what I need to do is figure out where I'm going to put these posts. So the literature says that I can put these posts 20 feet apart. And because it is fixed knot fencing, it'll stay rigid. Now, not that I don't believe them, but I'm not necessarily capable, uh, confident in my ability to stretch it that tight. So I think I'm probably going to maybe do 16 feet. That's also the capacity of the tape measure that I have right here. So let's do that. All right, so I have my initial hole that I drilled right over here. So I think I will start right here and go around. So we're gonna have uh, the gate into the pen, basically right where I'm standing. So it's sort of in the middle, uh, but closer to the chicken village on this side. So I think we'll have a six foot gate or something like right here. Um, not necessarily, not necessary for the tractor to get in, uh, just, you know, nice and comfortable for people in the wheelbarrow in case we need it. So yeah, so I'm going to set this up right here and, uh, see if we can get going. Let's do it. So you can see this one is obviously way bigger than this one. So this is a 10 foot log that's now three feet into the hole. So it's only seven feet tall. But my plan here is that we'll have a big, we'll have a nice tall gate and we're gonna have a hot wire running all around the outside because there's not gonna be any top to this. Because obviously emus aren't gonna be 
susceptible to like aerial predators, but while they're still young, we want to avoid what happened with the peacocks and try to keep them as secure as possible. So it's a six foot, three inch fence. And then I'm thinking we're gonna have, you know, probably a seven foot tall gate right here and then a hot wire on top of that. Cause I wanna make sure that like everybody can walk in here safely without having their head hit the top wire and also without having to, you know, disconnect the hot wire every time we come in. So I'm gonna go look and see if I have another cedar post, which I think I do, I just gotta check the height. Be right back. All right, everybody, we are back on day three of the emu building expedition. Today, we have finally all of our posts set after one day of digging, basically, one day of setting posts, and I am freaking exhausted after carrying those logs all around. But all the cement's in the ground, all the posts are set. So now it has come to time to start unrolling the fence. What I have behind me here is what I call the redneck unroller. So they make attachments for tractors for unrolling fencing. They make attachments for trucks for unrolling fencing. Uh, but this is free made of stuff that we have here. So I basically have a four x four that I milled up top and I have a four x four in the middle of this uh, fixed knot fencing. Now. This fence weighs, I think, north of 300 pounds, so I definitely wouldn't be able to do it myself. And usually when we do fencing, I have a whole team of people here. Uh, so if you are doing fencing yourself, this is a good tip on how to do it. So you just lift this up and you get it in the air. And obviously it's not the, the right orientation. It's sideways when it needs to be um, vertical, but this will allow me to unroll the fence myself. Now, the thing about doing fencing by yourself is that it's gonna get stuck on everything. So we have this fixed knot fence, and because there's all these little knots and stuff in it, it's gonna get caught on every weed, on every rock, on everything that it possibly can. So what I'm gonna do, and you can see, this is basically the start of our long, uh, of one of our long sides here. So I'm gonna grab the wire from where it's at, and I'm gonna unroll it, and probably, I'm gonna walk back as far as I can, and then I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna gather up all the slack, and then I'm gonna pull it down that way. And I'm gonna pull it as far as I can until it gets caught. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pull more out and I'm gonna keep going. So basically you pull all the slack that you can get, you bunch it all together, and then you pull it forward for as long as you can. Then you come back, pull out more slack and keep going. So you basically have to work around the, the objects that get caught, which are mainly curves and rocks. We have both of them right here. So it should be a little deal to do. I have about 30 minutes left on my lunch break. We'll see how much I can get done in that time. Let's go. Okay, I encountered a problem very early on in that the four x four that I had in the middle of the fencing roll was too big. And so the fencing roll got caught on it and didn't roll. So the thing is you need to have something small enough so that the fence can roll against it. Maybe I'll try a two by four. I'll be right back. All right, so now I have it set up on a much thinner piece of wood, but I don't know if you can see it over my shoulder. It's bending pretty good. We'll see if it holds up. My guess is about five minutes into this, it'll break or sooner, but uh, we'll see. All right, I don't know if this comes through, but so I basically have one wall done. So, and I'll show you in a second how I'm doing this, but it's basically like, think of it like riding a wave. So I'll pull a little bit of slack and then I'll stand at that pinch point 
and pull the slack past it until it's tight with where I'm at here. Then I'll go to the next pinch point, pass the slack around until we get to the end, and then you gotta kinda start over. So it is not an easy way to do it, but it is a way to do it. All right, I'll be back this afternoon. All right, so we are back this afternoon. So I'm gonna show you what I mean with pulling the, the slack in, or how I call it, riding the wave. So you see right here, we have a big pile of mesh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that curl and I'm just gonna kind of move it past the next obstacle and the next and the next and the next. And now the way, you know, obviously that's not the most efficient way to do it, but when you're in terrain like ours with weeds and rocks, I mean, look at all that stuff. You know, we're also using logs for posts. So there's lots of little, you know, branches on them little buds and stuff like that. And this stuff, like I said, literally gets caught on everything. So step one is gonna be pulling this mesh towards me and then towards where we need to go. And then I'll show you pulling it past the obstacles. So now you can see me sort of pulling the wave past the cedar post there. And I just take it a little bit out of a, at a time, uh, just moving it, you know, however big that wave is. And then I go to the next part and move it past that and so on and so forth. Obviously, this takes a lot more walking and possibly a lot more work, but again, it's tough to do it any other way in the terrain that you have here. And so the main reason why I'm doing this the hard way is that I feel that having the fence intact in one big long section is gonna be stronger and more durable than if we cut it into pieces. Cause sure, I could lay out the length that I needed for this side and then just kind of put it over there and then staple it in but then that's gonna create a weak point at that corner where if the emu's running and jumps and knocks you know, one or two of the pins out of the corner, that then becomes a weak point and it can get worse and worse. If it's one continuous piece, there's not gonna be a weak point like that. Even if they come and knock, let's say, every single staple out of this cedar post here, it's still gonna be attached on either side so it's not gonna be a crazy weak point. So I think that'll be a better way of doing it, even though it's more difficult and even though it's more time consuming, I think it'll be better in the long run. Now let's continue. All right, so I have ran all the wire and done a nice job scratching up both of my legs and arm. Thank you, thorns. Uh, so now I'm going to attach everything. And so what I have are these barbed fence staples. Let's take a look at them now. So you see they get hammered in just like that to hold it and be super, super duper secure. All right, so this is what they look like. Got a whole bucket full of them. And so they have little bars so that they're even stronger and they don't come out easy. So they'll go, they'll go in easy, but then these barbs will prevent them from coming out very easily. That way it's even stronger. And don't worry, I washed this shirt. I know I've been wearing nothing but orange for this entire video. All right, so this is what I'm using to keep tension on the fence. I actually missed one section and it's not like, you know, I didn't tighten it as much as I should have, and so it's a little loose, and I don't like that at all. Um, so this is now not attached at like three different points, but it's pretty tensile. So what I have is, I have a T-post woven in between some of the wires, and then I have two um, ratchet straps attached to a tree, and so you can see the ratchet strap end is looped around the T-post and the wire. And then if I wanna just get it a little tighter, just do that. And we just pull the fence towards us. Ah! <laughs> and so you can see that keeps it pretty tight. And then I go in with my uh, staples and knock them in. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get these all uh, locked up. Be right back. Thank you. 
So we found that since we got them out here, they are much more friendly. And we think maybe it's because they uh, they have somewhere to run away to now. You should switch to selfie mode. It's been, oh my God. <laughs> it's been nice to be able to come down here and hang out with them. What are you doing with that wing? I like being able to like, touch them and have them not be as afraid of us. Yes. Not my ear, bro. When she picked up the peacock. Yo. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Please give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and as always, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Beep, 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 beep.